Yes. Right? Yeah. If you look back over here, the man and the whole story, this means the character gets into trouble and then gets out of it again. So you can see one example they give is Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Who the heck knows that story? Oh, I love that. Yeah, I've seen that. Does anyone else, can anyone else chat me a story that follows that pattern of a character that goes into a deep pit and they have to pull themselves out of that pit. So they're going along like normal. Their life is pretty good. Some horrible tragedy befalls them and then they come out on the other end. So Sequoia puts a story by Terry Pratchett called Guards, Guards. Anyone else have a story they know where, again, a character starts out fine, then out of left field, something happens. They get in horrible trouble, and the rest of the story is them pulling themselves out of it. I want you guys to chat me just so we have some examples. I've only got one chatted to me. Can anyone else think off the top of their head of a man in a whole story? Well, thank you, Natasha. Mad Max. Yes, Mad Max is a very good example of a character getting thrown in a hole. Yes, Christopher Walker says Castaway. That's a typical story, getting lost on a desert island and trying to overcome everything and to get back. Right? Boy meets girl. Right? Very common story. They see each other, then they get pulled apart, and at the end, they're happy again. Eat, pray, love. Yes, definitely fits that model, right? And so coming back, I want to pull back, if I can, to uh, – let me see who's still here. Crystal, um, can I pull you back in? Yep. What kind of story do you feel like you're telling? This is something key to, to think about. It, is there – like when we look at your story – and your main character, what is the name of your main character, by the way? Dave. Say that one more time. Dave. Dave. That's my middle name. Good name. <laughs> um, talk to me about Dave. Let's just talk about it. Dave's good or ill fortune. This might be kind of simplistic, but it helps us to think. Does Dave start with good fortune or ill fortune? Bad fortune. And tell me, what is that ill fortune that Dave begins his journey um he was created as a defect he has only one eye and part of an arm so he was meant to be killed so he he was just born with bad fortune he's born with bad fortune now let me show you something here are you familiar with the work of franz kafka uh i don't think so <laughs> he wrote a story called the metamorphosis uh, has anyone ever ever uh read anything by Franz Kafka. This is one story type, which is called the bad to worse story. Also, if you watch Black Mirror, Black Mirror, who's watched the show Black Mirror, where things start off kind of weird and dystopian and get much and much worse by the end. The character starts bad and gets worse and worse. Is that gonna be your story? Are you going to have a story where the character starts as a defect and everything just gets worse from there, Crystal? Uh, no. It eventually gets better. I'm not exactly how it totally ends. Um, but there's a lot of ups and downs. There is, yeah, ups and downs. So is the end, is the character starts here at infinite badness, is the end here? Maybe not totally all the way up there, but more towards good, I guess. Yeah. And you can look here, is it a Cinderella story? Does that person get increasingly good fortune, then it's snatched away, and then they get it back? No, it's like up and down, and then up and down. And yeah, there's a lot, yeah. And so I think, it's not that your story has to follow any one of these patterns, but the idea is, as you're writing the story, you want to think about what is the arc of fortune that the character has to go through? right? And mm -hmm. why does the character have to go through that arc? It'll help you to refine it. Yeah. And so far, guys, let me, let me pull back. Thank you, Crystal, for that. Mm -hmm. I've said nothing about comics themselves, right? Why is it you think we spent most of the time just on storytelling? We've purely just talked about storytelling. Stephen, I don't think I've talked to you yet. Are you there, Stephen?
Hello, Stephen, are you there on the line? I want to see if people are here. I'm just calling on new people. Okay, I guess not. Cameron, are you still here? Yes. Why do you think we spent so much time just talking about the story and not even the visual components? Um, just to get a gist of the story first, like to get an understanding of where we are. Yeah, I mean, you've got to understand what the story is in, in many order ways to, in order to, yeah. before you get moving on it. Yeah. Ezekiel, let me ask this to you. Thank you, Cameron. Why do you think we spent so much time just thinking about story structure and brainstorming? I'm sorry, repeat the question. Yeah, Zico, why do you think we just, we just spent all this time just talking about storytelling, which could work in film, it could work in anything? Why do we start with that instead of jumping straight to comics? It gives you a timeline, mostly. Um, basically, the bigger picture before you just go right in. Exactly. And that's the key is, now, whether you're doing that development by drawing or writing, you could do both. Some people script visually right? And some people script purely in text. I tend to do both. Ezekiel, when you're making a script, how do you do it? Uh, I, I usually do it visually, but I think I should start doing it script too, because I get caught up. Yeah. You can do both at once. It's not one or the other. And I know, Crystal, are you drawing or writing or both as you're developing the story? Uh, I've been developing it for years, but I'm mainly, I'm doing a lot of drawing, but I need to do more, like, textual stuff, like get an actual timeline out of events. Yeah, and figure out where the conflicts are happening and how they're overcome. So I want to just show you my method, and there's many different methods depending on who you are, right? So we have just about a few minutes left, and then I have to go teach a 123, but I think it's important to end on this note, and then you can email me. So, guys, when we get to uh, scripting, right, this is a script, part of a script from uh, Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. But basically, looking here, scripting, if you're actually going to write a script that somebody else is going to illustrate, you describe it by panel and by page. So you describe visually what's going to occur on the page, and then you give us the dialogue and that's basically how a script for a comic works. So every comic I write, I typically have page one, and then I describe what generally is gonna happen on page one. And then I have the characters speaking, and that's the template from which the story to be published comes from. But I don't even get to that kind of scripting until I've worked all this stuff out, until I've brainstormed, I've thought about the arc of the story, and I've thought about the shape of the story of what happens. And then once I've done all that, I start to actually come up with characters and dialogue. So guys, here is something I'm gonna show you here, a case study. This is from a, a comic I made about, uh, it's a man in the whole story and it's about me surviving cancer. And so for me, I always start with writing things in my journal. I have a journal that I write things, ideas down, experiences down. And so in this particular case, I'm writing a journal entry about this image of me uh, as a young woman. This was a dream I had where I was a young woman in the dream and I'm being chased by vampires with my dad. Very weird dream. And I'm like, this is going to make a super cool comic. And I had to convert the dream from randomness into a script. So for this particular uh, opening, it says, cut tonight, trains passing by, long cargo trains, lights blinding. These trains look like those in my neighborhood, these sort of gas trains. Dad is looking back at me. So this provides the, a description of what's occurring. And this is narration. Suddenly I'm out. We're walking, driving, the train stream by. Dad's explaining the rules of the vampire apocalypse. There is, the towns have to pay a blood tax now, so even during the day, we'll have to be looking out. I'm constantly scanning the horizon. The Abercrombie vampire is nowhere to be seen. Now you don't need to know what's happening here in this, but I've converted basically a journal entry that's very all over the place into something that I want the artist to work on or myself to work on. And you can see here, it's pretty loose and it moves from that into 
this is an artist's favorite thing to do, a thumbnail sketch. So the artist took what I wrote and turned it into a thumbnail. And then we debated it back and forth. And you can see it, it's super rough and took him like very quick to draw. Once we established that we liked the script and it had to be kind of cut down a bit. From there, then you can see the artist did what's called a pencil draft. And there's no words there yet. And then from that, boom, that's what the final draft looked like. Script, pen, uh, thumbnails, pencils, drawing. And then we had to add in a little bit of dialogue, right? In detail, you can see there. Next one, again, thumbnail, pencils, final draft. So it's going from being loose to being tight. Many students will start with being tight and they drive themselves nuts because then they don't want to change anything. Who knows they've done that? They get to a final draft too quickly and then they don't want to change anything in the thing. I'm talking about anything artistically. The idea behind this method is to start loose with, you know, what's on your mind. And then once you've solidified the script, then you put in all this work. Again, same thing here. Loose tight, really tight. And even then we gave some notes here. And this is what the final draft looked like when it was ultimately published. But again, it all started with a dream I had that I just took random notes on in my journal. And then from there, I turned it into a script that I refined. And then we looked at like sketching out the art and then from there it gets more and more final so this is one way of doing it there are many ways to do it and as we end today i would say make sure as arthur said visit our website to see all kinds of ideas and things and you can email me if you have an idea and want to talk about it further unfortunately we've reached the end of our time and there's more we can discuss so crystal for example ezekiel other folks that have ideas you can definitely email me. I might not be super quick to get back to you because I have 140 students I'm teaching, but we can talk about that. You can also email Arthur as well. And Arthur, do you have any final words before we uh, end this uh, session? Just a reminder uh, that our first art meetup will be Thursday, October 27th. Uh, that date will be on the uh, James O'Keefe uh, blog. Uh, later this week, I will go ahead and put up the uh, link to our Zoom meeting uh, uh, address time. So uh, go ahead and bring your sketches, your drawings, your doodles, um, anything at all that you have that might uh, be used to us uh, to accompany your uh, your story. And uh, we'll talk about it. And we'll talk about how to ink it, format it and uh, get the process going. Yeah, and thank you so much. And I know we rushed a little bit at the end there. Um, the main thing to get from all this is number one, have fun at the outset, be very loose. That's really key. Otherwise, why are we doing it? Even if it's a serious story, like Katie said, you can start by being loose and open and free and then work yourself into having something final. One of the biggest obstacles is people getting too final too soon and then feeling married to the work. And then it becomes, all of us have done this, it becomes a burden instead of a joy. And that's what we want this to be, uh, a joy. And so, um, and again, I just showed you one process of doing things. There are many, many different ways to arrive at it. But I'd say the main thing is make sure you have some process that goes from kind of loose to tighter. I do have to wrap us up now. Again, you can email me if you want to talk more about your idea. And I hope you come to our next meeting. And we do, I'll, I'll make a pitch for this uh, on, I believe, the week of the election. November the 2nd, we do have a professional comics artist, Ajun Awan Mance, coming to speak if you want to talk to her. All right, guys, I have my students from my next class coming in right now. So thank you so much. And again, email me. Really appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Bye-bye. <laughs>